as we read the Gospels and we read the book of Acts, we saw where the disciples, including Paul, and I include him with the disciples, were able and willing to just give up everything they had to follow Christ. Amen. That means they gave up their dreams, their compassions, their desires to just go wherever God wanted them to go. Amen. Are you ready to do that this morning? Amen. Come on. We say it, but nevertheless, we keep living like the rest of the world. Mm. We keep living to accomplish, listen to me now, our dreams without knowing that they are God's dreams. We keep living to follow our compassions and our desires. When you die to yourself, it's like, hey, whatever. Whichever way God takes me. You know, if he wants me to be a millionaire, then so be it. If he wants me to live off $5,000 a year, so be it. If he wants me to live in San Diego, so be it. If he wants me to, come on now. Amen. If he wants me to move to Hopgood, <laughs> when the world's Hopgood, <laughs> then so be it. <laughs> that song just kind of triggered something in me this morning. I'm saying, Lord, stir up your people. Give them a mind and a willingness to die. And I'm not, once again, I'm not talking about physical death because we are, we're so scared of physical death. Give your people a mind to want to die so that your life will be lived through them. And the question this morning, as we get into our message this morning, are you, are you, are you, ready, are you ready, are you willing to die, or you just got to have things your way? You just got to go where you want to go. You just got to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Where are you at in this spectrum? Now, you don't have to hide it out. <laughs> but ask yourself that. Am I really ready to just die so that God can live through me and with me and in me? Or am I just like the rest of the world that's just so caught up in themselves that it's all about what we want? I can tell you now for a fact that until you are ready to die, all you're going to ever have is religion. Rituals. Formalities. But when you die, something happens. Mm, yeah. Now this is for somebody this morning because this is not even part of the scripture. I guess every Sunday I say the same thing. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Because God is present with us. God knows what you need and what you need and what you need and what you need. Amen. He knows what, what you need. Remember Paul, who used to be Saul? Mm -hmm. See, in, when you get in that book of Acts, you realize that Saul had been groomed to be one of the top religious people. And he hated, I mean hated, with a passion. Anybody that would go against the law of God, anybody that would not move in a traditionally spiritual manner, he hated that. He had dreams. I'm sure he had dreams. The Bible don't talk about it as such, but I'm sure he had dreams. Especially, listen to me, especially when this group came on the scene called the Christians. I believe that Saul's dream was to see every Christian dead. I believe that it was Paul's dream to see every Jew, come on, commit themselves to not going that way. But something happened to Paul, which was Saul, on the way to Damascus. You know the story. Jesus caught him with the light out there. Come on now. Mess him up. Messed him up. But from that moment forward, and I'm trying to make a point here, from that moment forward, Paul, a Saul died. Mm. And maybe that's why his name had to be changed. He, <laughs> he 
He died. Yes, he did. Surrender. And all the dreams and the hope of the old Saul died with him. Amen. It was no longer important to Saul to have his way. Amen. It was no longer important to Saul to see all the Christians dead. Amen. It was no longer important to Saul for people to recognize him as a spiritual scholar. Amen. Because his dreams, his goals, his destination, right. his destiny yeah. did not matter anymore. That's right. Come on. Where are you at? Mm. Are you still fighting this thing? Trying to get where you want to go? And trying to make God get you there? Amen. Well, God, you know I'm a Christian, so you know this has got to happen. <laughs> God is still laughing at you. Yes, he is. Die. Look at somebody and say, die. 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 Oh, you know you don't want to do that. So die. 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 I was telling somebody something the other day. And once again, please forgive me. I'm going to get in the message in a minute. <laughs> I was telling somebody the other day how in 1986 that I was coming out of the military, I had all these dreams. I, I had all these ideas about how I'm going to make all this money and all these different businesses I'm going to do. Amen. And how God, <laughs> I, I, I knew how I was going to do. I was going to go back to, to California, down in San, San Diego where it's sunny all the time. <laughs> and I was going to use the skills that I had developed over 22 years and I was going to make me some money, honey. <laughs> and God said, I tell you what, Dan, I got another idea. Why don't you just go to a hospital? Amen. 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 And by the way, you ain't going to make no money. That's right. Amen. I fought that for a while because I had not died. That's right. I wanted what I wanted. Maybe this is the message. I don't know. I wanted what I wanted. I wanted what I wanted. And God loves me so much, he starts stirring up my life and got me to the point where I cried out and said, okay, whatever you want to do, Amen. I'm willing to do it. Nothing happens until you die. That's right. Christ can't live. Are you ready to die today? Amen. This is the day. This is the day. September 6th. Is that September 6th? Is that what it is? September 6, 2020. This, you need to write that down. September 6, 2020. This is the day you die. Amen. This is the day you say, hey, whatever. Whatever you want, I want it. Whatever you give me peace to do, I'll, I'll do it. Whichever direction you want me to go, I'll go. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet for a moment. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise him. Hallelujah. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to die. Yes. Hallelujah. You're going to die. Yes. 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 You're going to die. die. Yes. If it takes for every one of your dreams to die, you're going to die. Amen. You're going <laughs> you to die to what you want. Yes, Lord. You're going to die today. Yes, Lord. You're going to die. Yes, Lord. You're going to die. Some of you want to be the, the prettiest person in the world. Some of you want to be the wealthiest person in the world. Come on now. Yes, Lord. Some of you want to be the, the happiest person in the world. Whatever it is, God said, you're going to die to that today. Yes, Lord. So that God's will and his plans can get done. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You know what the good news is? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> when you die to what you want, and you start living for what God wants. The blessings just flow. Amen. God wants ten times more for you than you ever thought about wanting. But you got to die. You got to die. Some of you have said, Lord, I'll never forgive that person. God said, that got to die. Got to die today. Got to die today. Huh? Some of you said, oh, God, I'll never do that. God said, that got to die. 
everything. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you surrendering ourselves, Lord God, surrendering everything we have yes, Lord. to you, Lord God, today. Father, forgive our ignorance. Yes, Lord. For that's all it has been, is our ignorance. Yes. It has not been rebelliousness. It's simply been our lack of knowledge. Yes, Lord. But Father, now we know that we must die to what we want. We must die to who we were. We must die to Father together. Individually and collectively yes, today, yes, Lord. We, die. we die. We die to what we want and the direction in which we were going so that you may live in us. We ask Holy Spirit, hallelujah, come on in. Lead us one step of the other way, one day at a time. Lead us. Lead us. Lead us. Now, Lord God, we surrender all to you today, this moment. Yes, we surrender all. Have your way in our lives. Right We're ready to give it all up. It all Have yes, your Lord. way. Yes, in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. See, you may not have felt anything. Let me tell you something. Things are different. Things are different. When you try to pursue your own dream from here on out, if, if you were sincere as we prayed that prayer, when you try to pursue your own dreams, the Holy Spirit's going to remind you, uh-uh, that part is dead. Mm -hmm. Amen? You can fight it if you want to. Let me say that again. You can fight it if you want to, but God loves you so much. He's going to get you on the right track. Isn't God good all the time? Amen. All the time. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're saved this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Huh? Oh, my God. Some of us already made decisions that weren't God's decisions. Because you won't let your dreams die. Your way of doing things die. And you know we don't want to suffer. <laughs> you know we don't want to suffer. God's a good God. Let me get into the message of today. Uh, I don't know why God does this, Dad. Hallelujah. I told him what the message was before I got here. Yeah. You always creep in there with his stuff. He and I are going to have to have a talk about next Sunday. Amen? God is good. Listen, today we want to continue talking about the faithfulness of God and the fact that God is truthful. Everybody say that. God is truthful. God, God is truthful. truthful. Can't lie. He can't lie. Faithfulness means a lot of things to a lot of people. And I'm sure you understand that. But let's, as we move forward between now and next Sunday, let's just agree on a few key words for faithfulness. One word is trustworthy, which means responsible and honorable. Another word is reliable, which means dependable and, and unfailing. The third word is truthful, which we're going to talk about today, which means mm -hmm. honest and open and, and candid. The fourth word is, is loyal, which means dedicated, devoted, and constant. And the fifth word is accurate, which means precise, correct, exact. This morning, we want to focus on the fact that God is truthful which means that he is honest, open, and candid. So you say, preacher, I know you're truthful. Well, I'm not sure you do. God tell you one thing, but then you believe the lie of the devil. Hallelujah. Come on now. Amen? Yeah. God said, no evil shall befall you. Right. Neither shall any plague. Come on, you can, you can quote that. I know it is. Neither shall any plague. What? Come now thou dwellest. Do you believe that? But another person said, you better be careful. This stuff going to kill you. <laughs> Somebody lying. Somebody lying. Mm -hmm. Amen. It may kill somebody. It ain't killing me. But I'm believing the truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. What about you? Amen. I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 and 19. See, when you know the truth... A lie will never conquer you. 
Alive will never conquer you. And I will never conquer you. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 through 19. It says, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no other, he swore by himself, saying, listen, this is what he said. He's saying, surely, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. See, when he says surely, he said, you can, you can take this to the bank. It's never, that word never going to fail. And verse 15 says, and so, after he had patiently endured, <laughs> talking about Abraham, he obtained the promise. Why? Because he believed God. He believed God. I remember back in 1986 when God told me that the next major spiritual revival, spiritual move in America is going to start in a place called Ahoski. You heard me say that. Now, who in the world is going to believe that? I said, God, you got a map. <laughs> now, listen, it's been 34 years since I got that word. But I'm standing on that word. Amen. 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 I'm standing on that word. Because God's not a man that he should lie. Amen. And Abraham stood on that word. That's what this whole passage is about. Because God promised himself and Abraham stood on it until he got it. Amen. Verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto their heirs a promise, the immutability, which means it can't be changed, of his counsel, what God did, he gave the promise, but then it says he did something else. He confirmed it by an oath. So you got my promise, but now I'm going to give you an oath. So God did two things there. Verse 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Boy, that's a lot of words in there. Amen? That's a lot of words in there. Basically, he's saying because God, listen, God gave you the promise and he gave you the oath. He said that ought to be enough to give you hope that whatever God said to you is going to come about. It's got to come about. See, if you have not heard the audible voice of God and you sometime in your walk for the, in, with the Lord, then you need to hear the voice of God through his word. And God, through his word, has promised, will promise, going to continue to promise you some good stuff. But you've got to hang on to that. Because the devil will come with a lie. Believe me, he will come with a lie. Verse 19, last verse. Which hope, talking about that hope, we have, we, we have that hope as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. What is it saying here? It's saying it's impossible for God to lie. Boy, if we understood that. See, no, if we believe that. See, the understanding is the first step. But then you've got to believe what God says. If you, could, if you could understand and believe the promises that God has made to you as a child of his, as a Christian, come on. We all be, walk, we all be walking on water. But I don't believe that we've got to the place where that thing has set still in our heart to where we understand and believe God's promises. And is owed to us. We need to understand today, and the whole purpose of this message today is to confirm in your heart that, that God is truthful and that He cannot lie. Let me tell you something. Ice cream. Everybody's eaten ice cream before? Yes, sir. Ice cream in its natural natural state is cold. Come on now. But when you make it hot, put it in the microwave and see what happens. You will change the identity of the ice cream. It's really no longer ice cream. I don't know what you call it then. Call it hot cream? In the same way, God is truthful. He's truthful. And if, he, and if a lie gets in there somehow, then he's no longer God. Like that ice cream. 
God is truthful because he is truth. He is truth. Whatever truth is, he is truth. He's the one that created everything. He's the one that began everything. So whatever he says, come on now. See, I, I, if I was a good carpenter, which I'm not, I could probably create something out of a piece of wood, listen. And I, I, I can call it whatever I wanted to call it. You know, I call it whatever I want to call it. I call it a, a, I call it a snowmobile. But then you come along and say, hey, that's a nice scooter. No, wait a minute. I, I made the thing. <laughs> Amen? I made it. I know what it is. And that's the same thing with God. God is truth. He's truthful because he is truth. Let's look at that scripture in John chapter 14 where Jesus was talking. So you got to understand now. You got to understand the Trinity. You know, the God, the Father, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're not different. They just have different functions. Amen. John 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto them, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. See, we all normally say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he's saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. What would Jesus say unto him? Jesus said, whatever I say is truth. Unfortunately, the people of his day, the majority of them just couldn't take it as the truth. They had lied so much and had been lied to so much that they couldn't recognize the truth when they heard it. Truth means, I told you before, earlier, as we started off, truth means reality. It means facts. It means the real deal. It means the real deal. That's, that's really what it means. The kingdom of God is, is reality. Now, now, here's the point here that I don't want you to miss. The kingdom of God, which has come upon us, is reality. All of this, come on now, all of this that we've experienced from birth, no, it, this is not reality. This is, this, is, this is, in a sense, it's a lie. But we live for that lie. We normally live for it until we die. The kingdom of God is the reality. And I'm praying that each and every one of you in the sound of my voice, come on, has already entered into the kingdom of God and will be there for, for eternity. That's what truth is. And when you embrace and accept and receive the kingdom of God, then you have embraced and received reality. You have embraced, you say, preacher, what you talking about? It takes God to reveal to us the reality of everything. The devil has been trying from the beginning of time to give us, to get us to believe some sort of lie. What lies has he been trying to tell you? Come on. What lies has he been trying to tell you? Maybe he's been trying to tell you that, that you're going to be poor all your life. I don't know. Maybe, listen, maybe he's been trying to tell you you don't look that well when you know you're pretty. You know you're handsome. What lies he been trying to tell? See, that's that's his game. That's his game. That's his game to tell a lie. Now, the issue that we've got to sell is who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe God? Who is reality? Who is truth? Or are we going to believe a lie? You know, in our culture today, right now, September 6, 2020, there's, listen, our culture is dealing with so many lies that folks get confused. They don't know who to believe or what to believe. Amen. But then there's another segment of our culture that have entered into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You know what they believe? They believe what the Holy Spirit tells them. That's what they believe. But some of us have even cut off the Holy Spirit. So all you got is something that's not real. To believe in. We're experiencing so much confusion and chaos in our country right now. Hallelujah. That a lot of people, a lot of people that are confessing Christians don't know what to believe anymore. The devil is a liar according to John chapter 8 verse 44. And let me just read this. See it's important today for us to understand this. 
And maybe as I get right in the middle of this message, you will understand how I feel about this whole thing. It is so important today for you to understand that God is truth and the devil is a liar. And that you have a choice as to who to believe Amen. in this walk. But we started this thing off to say, look, you're going to have to die first Amen. before you can walk this walk. John 8, 44 says, you, Jesus tells us, the folks said, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Let me just read that little, little part again. Because there is no truth in him. If the devil tell you it's raining, you know it's not. <laughs> if the devil tell you it's not raining, you know it is. Amen. That's, 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 that, that's his game. That's his game. He's got nothing else. When he speaks a lie, Jesus says, he speaketh of his own. Why? For he is a liar and the father of it. He's the father of it. What, what, is, what is Jesus saying? Jesus said before, before the devil, there wasn't a lie. There was just truth. Mm. There was just truth. It's impossible for God to lie. Amen. It is impossible for God to lie. Say that with me. It, it is, is impossible, impossible for God to lie. lie. Let me tell you the ultimate result. Using Romans 1, the ultimate result of forsaking God's truth is a reprobated mind. If you keep rejecting the truth of God, you're going to have a reprobated mind. Amen. I wonder what would happen if just the, just the folks in the sound of my voice, listen, that are confessing Christians say, listen, I'm going to stop listening to the devil. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stop listening to everything except the Holy Spirit. I wonder what kind of changes our communities would have. I wonder what kind of changes our, our, our county would have, our state would have, our country would have. If just us. Decide, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to the Holy Spirit because that's the only source of truth. Amen. I tell you what, our situation would be a whole lot better. The ultimate result of forsaking God's truth is a reprobated mind. You can believe the lies and act out the lies all you want, but eventually you're going you're gonna to develop and have developed in you a reprobated mind. I told you before, listen, the devil, we just read it, the devil is the father of lies, and if you believe the lie, you will live the lie. Let me say that again. If you believe the lie, you will live the lie. Whatever lie the devil is telling you. If you believe the lie, you will live the lie. And today, listen, we're just going to decide to just move out and be, be free. Be free from all lies. Just be free. If you believe the lie, you will live the lie. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. I'm going to just show you that the ultimate result of forsaking God's truth is a reprobated mind. In Romans chapter 1, God was speaking. And he's letting us know, listen, the way this thing is set up, a lot of people are being deceived by the devil. And if they're not careful, they're going to wind up with a reprobated mind. Look at what he said in verse 18. Now, we, haven't, we didn't mess with verse 1 through 17 because the introductory thing. But in verse 18, he starts talking about the wrath of God coming into people's lives. The wrath of God where things just don't work out, where, where things just fall apart. That, that's what the devil's trying to do when he gives you a lie. The Bible says the devil comes to do what? Steal, kill, 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 and destroy. destroy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You weren't saved all your life. The devil probably told you a few lies that caused you to live the lie. Come on now. So that he could steal, kill, or destroy something in your life. When are we going to stop listening to his lies? And when are we going to start believing, believing this truth? I paused there just now. Because all those truths are just running through my mind. What truth? Well, God says, great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Is that true or is that a lie? Amen. Hallelujah. 
God said he'll supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. Is that a truth or is that a lie? It's true. God said that all things got to work together for our good Amen. because we're called. Come on now. And because he loves us. Is that the truth or is that a lie? It's true. God said he'll bless us coming in and bless us going out. Is that the truth or is that a lie? It's true. Lord. Man, he, look, there's so much. We can just do this all day. Amen. We say it, but we don't, either we don't understand it or ultimately we don't believe it. Because it's so easy for us to believe a lie mm -hmm. the devil comes up with. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you. Hallelujah. 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 I know some folks say, look, look, say, you know, don't, you be, look, look, listen. Be careful that pastor when he tell you that. Because he'll mess you up. Oh, wait a minute now. God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Why? For the Lord thy God is with you. <laughs> Is that truth or is that a lie? That's the truth. Hallelujah. We all understand what's going on uh, medically in our country with the, with the COVID-19. We all understand that from a natural standpoint. We all understand that. We're not crazy. We understand that. But I wonder what would happen if we just stand on the word of God. Amen. Just stand. I told you, you know, take whatever precautions you need to take care. Take, you know, especially if, if government leaders are asking you to take certain precautions. Take those precautions. But don't let the thought for a moment come in your mind that you're going to get COVID-19. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I thought about that thing the other day. I'm saying, well, what, 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 what is the devil trying to get us to believe? He's trying to get us to believe. Listen to me now. Good. Once again, now here. I'm, I'm going to talk about this till it's gone. Once again, you know, I'm saying take whatever precaution you need to take. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But what lies he telling you as a Christian? He said, all right. He says, uh, don't, you know, you got to be afraid of this thing. Okay, why do I have to be afraid of that? Because it may, it may make you sick. My answer to that, so what? Amen. So what? And that's what you need to develop in your spirit. So what? Has anybody here never been sick in their life? And then what's the other lie you tell you? Well, you know, it may go beyond that. You will die. And my answer to that, so what? <laughs> if I believe what I've read, then it's going to be a lot better for me on the other side than on this side. Amen. Amen. The only reason I'm holding on is because God hasn't released me from an assignment. Amen. So when you take on that position, number one, of believing what God says, and when the lie comes in, you just say, so what? So what? Amen? Amen? I'm not saying live recklessly. No, take whatever precautions you need. But when fear is set in there, you believe the lie. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. You have believed the lie. All right? Wear your mask. It's okay. Wash your hands. That's okay. Keep your distance. That's okay. But when fear comes in there, it comes in there for one because of one reason. You have believed the lie. And that lie is now controlling you. I wonder what happened when we stopped believing that lie. And just start saying, so what? Hello? So what? See, you got to understand that. So, so what? So, so what? So what? So what? That's a powerful thing. So what? So what? See, prior to being saved, when I when I when I when I was drinking a lot, you know, the devil could could bring to me and say, would trick me and say, look, you 
you know, you, you better not go to this person's house, that person's house, because they'd be drinking or whatever, you know? And I would stay away. But now, listen to me, now, listen, now he don't come with me that. He don't, he don't even mess with me with that. Because he know my answer. So what? So what? I, look, I can go around the distillery if I had to because that has no effect over me anymore. Amen? Amen? Amen. So what? So you know what he does? Listen to me. He don't, he, don't, he don't come with those lies anymore because he knows they have no effect. And that's exactly the same thing he will do for you. Whatever lie you've been believing, if you get to the place, listen, where they have no effect, he don't come that way no more. He tries to find some other way to come in there. So what? What are we afraid of? What? What? Well, if I get sick, I won't be able to take care of my family. You're not taking care of your family now. God is. Amen. Amen. Hello? Mm -hmm. That same God can take care of your family if you get sick. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. All right. I'm going to get to this thing whether I want to or not. Hallelujah. Look at Romans chapter 1. Because we're talking about the ultimate result of forsaking God's truth is a reprobated mind. Romans chapter 1 verse 18. This is what happened. First of all, here's the situation. And he's saying, he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold, which means suppress, the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Look, look the secrets of God is not hidden from you. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Oh yes, the Bible talks about the gospel being spread all over the world. But God said, listen, even without the gospel being taught, being spread, being preached, God said, I have made it clear to all human beings that there is a God. Amen. That there is a God. Somebody did this. Somebody did this. He said, I made it clear. So they are without excuse. They may have believed the lie that, they, that was taught to them as they were coming up. But all they got to do, listen. All you got to do is go down to the park, get in one of those swings and look up. <laughs> and see the sky, see the clouds, see the birds flying in the air. Come on now. See the progress of man over, over the last 6,000 years. You know they've got to be a God. Now this verse talks about how the wrath of God is going to come down and deal with people who just refuse to believe that there is a God. And he goes on and talks about the problem in verse 21. All the way up to verse 19, he's telling you about the situation. But in verse, starting with verse 21 through 23, he talks about the problem. He said, I, he, in the first section, he said, listen, I've told you, I've already proven to you that there is a God. All you got to do is open your eyes. You'll know that there is a God. But then he, he said, but, but you got a problem because everybody don't want to believe this. Look at verse 21. He said, because, because mm -hmm. that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. These are folks who act like there is no God. Say, are you crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Look at verse 22. What did they do? Professing themselves to be wise. <laughs> they became what? Fools. See, a fool have said in his heart, there is no God. And not only what comes out of our mouth, but what comes through our lives, through our actions. When you start acting like there is no God, then the Bible says you become a fool. But you know what? God so loved us so much. Hallelujah. He didn't leave us in a situation. He opened our eyes to the truth. And you and I are sitting here and standing here today because we've been exposed to the truth. Amen. Had we not been exposed to the truth, listen, we would still be under the leadership and the clutches of Satan. 
Oh, don't tell me you do what you wasn't serving Satan. Well, if you wasn't serving, listen, Jehovah God, who were you serving? You showed not God. You were serving Satan. Whether you want to admit that or not, that's who you were. And then he goes on to say, listen, the last verse, verse 23, you know what they did? They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like into corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creepy things. They start making statues. Say, I'm going to worship this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to worship that. Some folks worship money. God said they become fools. When they, when they avoid the truth and they believe the lie, and now they start acting like they believe the lie by making all these little statues and stuff that they want to, come on. They want to worship. Come on. Folks, buy, folks buying six-inch crosses, putting the crown on their neck. Come on. Worshiping that cross on their neck. God said, that's a problem. Once you realize that there is a God, but then you act as if there's not a God, then that's a problem. And it'll lead somewhere. Let's see what it'll lead to. And this is God talking in general, generalities. He wrote Romans 21 through 24. Here's the initial results. There's two major results to acting like that. You cannot act like there is no God. Amen. You're going to have to pay a price. And for every act of disobedience, what is there? There's a season of disorder. You can act like there is no God, like you calling the shots if you want to, but it's just a matter of time. You're going to run into that season of disorder. Look at verse 24. He talks about that. He said, all right, you're going to keep acting like I'm not around, like I don't exist? He said, because wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness. What is uncleanliness? That's sinful desires. Whatever they felt like doing. Whatever look good, smell good, taste good, sound good, felt good. He said, do it. Just do, just do what you want to do. Through the lust of their own hearts. Why? To dishonor their own bodies. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Look at 25. Who change or exchange the truth of God into a lie. Now, <laughs> Oh man, God in the name of Jesus. I don't know why, why, why the body of Christ is not reminding people this all over the world. You cannot act like there is no God. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. Once again, 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. There is a God, folks, and it's not us. You say, I know that preacher. I'm not sure. Come on. Well, if you know there's a God, why are you still lying? If you know, come on now. If you know there's a God, why are you still stealing from people? No matter how small, oh, it's just a little thing, it's stealing. If you, if you know there's a God, why are you still living in adultery or, or fornication? Why are you doing it? Why? If you know there is a God. Do you want that season of disorder to come upon you? <laughs> you know, good, good thing our God is a merciful God and not a just God. Because <laughs> see, if he's all about justice, oh boy, we'd have some mess. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It says, wherefore, God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between them. Who changed the truth. Talk about the folks who did this. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. What they do? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Let me tell you something. The lie is the word of, of Satan. The word of the devil. Who is the father of lies. All lies. Are, all lies. All lies. Every lie. Big, small. To believe the lie is to reject the truth of God. To believe the lie is to reject the truth of God. Now, that's the part we, we, we leave out. See, you, you, once you decide not to believe what God says, listen, and you're going to believe the lie that the devil tells you, then what you're doing is rejecting the truth of God. 
You know what the world needs right now? You know what our community needs right now? To see some strong Christians just stand up. Amen. Listen, let's just stand up. Listen, you don't, you don't have to say what I say, but you can say it's going to be all right. Amen. All is going well, be well. Amen. You see somebody get sick, even sick from this, this disease we're dealing with, you speak something to them. Say, that person's not going to die. Just, just speak it out of your mouth. No, okay, they're going through some things, but they're not going to die. They'll be all right. They'll be back home. Speak it. Speak it as if you are speaking for God. Speak it. Speak it. A primary sign of God's abandonment of any society of people is that they become obsessed with sexual immorality and perversion. You saw it in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. You saw it in the story of the Benjamite that was visiting through and all these homosexuals come out everywhere. Amen. If you study history, you saw it in Rome. That's what brought Rome down. Whenever you start acting like there is no God, eventually that spirit of sexual immorality is going to show up. Amen. It's just going to show up. Amen. Because it's, it, listen, what, what is sex? sex? Sex is designed to reproduce. Amen. And only God can reproduce. That's right. Ha! That's what, it, that's what it's about. We don't think of it like that, but that's, that's the whole purpose of it. It's to reproduce. Mm -hmm. It's to reproduce. And what the devil does, he tries to pervert it, mm -hmm. the purpose of God. So that sin, that sexual immorality is going to show up every time you go against the truth of God and embrace the lie of the devil continuously. Let me go on in Romans chapter 1 and you'll see that happen. In verse 26 he says, for this cause. Everybody say, for this cause. For this cause. What was the cause? The cause that they moved away from God and they stopped believing the truth of God and stopped believing the lie. I don't know about you, but I'm going to believe God. If you don't know what God said, listen, about you, about your health, about your situation in life, you need to get in the Word and find out. But then you need to understand it and you need to believe it and stand on it. I don't care what, who says what. Stand on God's Word for you, for your life, for your family. Stand on it. Stand on it. Stand on that. Because if you believe the lie, you'll live the lie. Verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. You know what vile means? When you look that up in the dictionary, it means despicable. It means evil. It means degraded. It means wicked. It means foul. So God gave them up for vile affection. For Listen, look and see what happened here. He said, listen, for even their women, for even their women, did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise, here these men following too. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. See, I would put it another way. Receiving within themselves a season of disorder. Receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. God says it's going to come to that. It's, it's going to come to that. And you and I are living in a time now in America where that spirit has taken over a, a lot of people's lives and a lot of people's minds. Are you with me? <laughs> listen, 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 <laughs> listen. You you can't even you can't, you you can't even do that to dogs. You can't you can't take a dog. Listen to me now. You can't take a dog and <laughs> and and set a rat in front of it. Say, all right, dog, go have sex with this rat. Dog got better sense than that. Amen. Amen. Dog know that he. Or she is not, that he is not a rat. Can't do that. That's not truth. That's a lie. Are you with me? That's a lie. That's a lie. But the devil, listen to me, the devil 
has told so many people, even in our culture, all right, he's told so many men that they can have intimacy with another man when that's a lie. That's like telling the dog, you can have, listen to me now, you can have sex with the rat. God never created that dog. Oh, can you hear me? To do that. So when a man becomes intimate with another man, what he's doing is rejecting the truth of God and believing the lie. Now folks get into that all kinds of different ways, but a lie is still a lie. It's still a lie. It's still a lie. Now here's a, listen. So in order, listen, I'm just using this for an example. For in order for another man to have become sexually intimate with a, with a, with a man, he has to believe that he's a female. <laughs> Somebody got to believe it. Are you with me? I told those guys in prison, when we used to go to prison all the time, these guys get mad at me and stuff. Because see, in their prison, they get this macho thing. They get the little weak guy in there. He come in there, so everybody going to rape him. And then they get, they get their chest filled up because you know, they have raped that man. And so I went in the prison and said, hey, no, 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 no. What you have done, listen, listen. I say, when a man in prison, listen, when a man in prison rapes another man, then they're both homosexual. They won't hear that. I know homosexual. What you doing having sex with a man? That's right. That's right. See, Satan lied to them and think, tell them that they can do that without, without, listen, without embracing the lie of the devil. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. It's gonna take two homosexuals to have a homosexual relationship. That's right. I don't care what you call yourself. Amen. Amen. It's a lie. God said, you keep rejecting him and you're going to ultimately, the culture ultimately going to go that way. It's going to go that way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's a good God all the time. The third result is a reprobated mind. See, it's so important that we believe the truth. Now, I'm just using this as an example. But believing the devil lies, no matter what the lie is, will lead to a reprobated mind. After a while, you begin to think that good is bad and bad is good. And God has just given us an example here of what, what, what ultimately happens a lot of times in cultures where people do that. They start rejecting them. Look at verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You keep believing the lies of the devil. Come on now. You keep, I think even with the COVID-19, we got to be careful what we believe. Are you going to believe the report of God or are you going to believe the word? What are you going to believe? Take precautions for the other person's sake. You heard what I just said? Take precautions for the other person's sake. But believe what God has said to you. You say, well, that's an innocent thing. That's not homosexual. No, 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 no. Listen, a lie is a lie. That's what this whole thing going to boil down to. Ha, ha, say, Boshita. That's what the whole thing boils down to. All right? In the next five to ten years, we're going to be given so many lies that if you don't know what the truth of God is, you're going to fall for one of those lies. And then you're going to live it. You're going to live it. You are going to live it. I don't know about you, but I'm going to live the truth of God. Amen? I'm not going to believe no lies. I know the truth. I'm going to live the truth. If God said it, I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to expect it. I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to walk in it. What about you? He says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do what? To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness. Maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, 
implacable, that means cruel or without pity for people, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that which they commit such thing, that those who commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. If you believe the lie, you'll live the lie. God is truth. The devil is a liar. God is truth. The devil is a lie. All the time. Every day. I got to say it again. If you believe the lie, you'll live the lie. Amen? Now the lie that's going around now is that you have to be scared. The lie that's going around now is that you must be scared. But the truth is, is found in the New Testament where God says, I have not given you that spirit. I have not given you a spirit of fear. Well, if God has not given me a spirit of fear and I'm afraid, where did that fear come from? It had to come from a lie. Are you with me? It had to come from a life. From this day forward, you're not only dead to yourself, but you're going to walk, hallelujah, you're going to walk in boldness. You're going to walk in truth. Mm -hmm. You're going to walk in what God has said and not what anybody else has said, what God has said. Yeah. And you will not be afraid. And when the devil approaches you with something that sounds like good common sense, you'll say, so what? I'm going to stand on God's word. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God is truthful. God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. That's what the word of God says. God is trying to change our lives. If the world ever needed to see truth, they need to see it now. If the world ever needed to see God, the difference in God's people and the world's people, they need to see it now. They need to see it now. They need to see it now. Once again, I'm not saying don't take whatever precautions you think you need to, but don't move in fear. Mm -hmm. Don't move. The precautions are really for the other folks. Amen? Not for you. They're for the other folks. That's why you do them, to make the other people feel at ease, not because you're afraid of anything. This COVID-19 gives us a reason. Give us a good, a, a good example. Give, give us a good uh, purpose for standing on the word of God. See, up until now, it's just, well, go to church. <laughs> Amen. But now, now, we know what you believe. Amen. Because what you believe is going to come out of your mouth. Amen. We know whether or not you're afraid. Come on now. And being afraid during these circumstances is, is a natural, normal thing. Mm -hmm. All right? It's a natural, normal thing. But we're not natural, normal human beings. Amen. Hello. Amen. We're children of God. Amen. We're children of God. God is a good God all, all the time. Yes, he is. I've got to wrap this up by giving you God's purpose for abandoning the, the unrighteous to sin. But we said that that's what he's going to do in, in, in Romans chapter 1. He's, he's got to abandon them. And then, you know, they'll just deal with their season of disorder. But there's a purpose. There's two purposes. First of all, God's purpose for abandoning the unrighteous to sin is, is to allow sin and its consequences to accelerate as part of his judgment on them. God said, all right, you won't believe me. You'll believe the lie, then I'll just allow you to believe more and more lies and more and more lies. So you come to the point where that season of disorder overtakes you. Romans chapter 2, verse 2 says, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And then, hallelujah, to make them realize that their need for a saving or salvation. That's his other reason for allowing, come on, for allowing, uh, for abandoning rather the, uh, the ungodly or the unrighteous to their sin. It's because he wants to make them realize their need for salvation. Most people won't realize that. They really won't. You know how people get saved? Two basic ways people get saved. Two basic ways. Number one, they see the traumatic change in you, and they like it. 
So they follow it to Jesus. Are you with me? They see you. They just follow you to Jesus. The other way that most people get saved is that they run into a brick wall. They, they just run into a place where they got nowhere else to go. And their stuff is just so bad, so raggedy, they know they need some help. And so they call out, and, and, and God, God calls them. He, he just calls them into his kingdom. He just saves them. So God abandons the unrighteous when they, when they abandon him and they, when they abandon his truth. But he doesn't do it because he doesn't love them. He, he, doesn't, he, he wants their situation to, to accelerate to the point where they cry out for salvation. You've got to decide today. Are you going to believe God's truth? Come on now. I'm telling you what I know, not what I think. In the next five or ten years, our culture is going to be faced with so many things, so many things, that you're going to be confused as to what's right and what's wrong. So right now, today, you need to decide, I'm sticking with the word of God. I don't care what I see, I don't care what I hear, I'm sticking with the word of God. I'm, sti ha! I'm sticking with the word of God. Many will not, and many will move away from God. But God said, now you, today, you, you have died today. Come on. And you have made a commitment to follow truth. Let us go to God in the word of prayer. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord God. Thank you for reminding us of your truthfulness. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for putting us on guard of the enemy's lies. Yes, Lord. Father, help us to discern. Help us, Lord. Help us to understand and believe your, your truth, your word. Yes, Give us a hunger for your word, Lord God. Let us begin to devour your, your word and eat it up yes. to the point, Lord God, that we become your word and your word becomes us. Yes, Lord. Give us understanding first of what your word is. And then bring us to the point, Lord God, where we believe and walk in your word. Let your word, Lord God, not only protect us, but protect our family and our friends. Oh, God, and our co-workers and all those in our sphere of influence. Help us, Lord God, to recognize the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. Help us to recognize and reject the lies of the enemy. And help us to embrace your truth. Father, we do die to ourselves today. And we do commit ourselves to following your truth. Yes. And no lie that the devil can throw our way. Now, Lord God, hallelujah, manifest yourself in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for today's message. We know that the word of God has been a blessing to you. To hear more messages, visit our website, www www.ahoskychristian.com If you would like to give a donation, you can do this on the website as well or via Cash App, ACC209. Thank you for partnering with us. Until next time, God bless you.